this week in the field, answering your questions, some questions about tide prediction and tripods. Hi, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In the Field. This week it's a Q&A episode. Before I get into today's questions, uh, really quick, in episode 144, I broke format and asked what was working and what wasn't. And thank you so much for all the comments and feedback that have come in. Uh, it, it's been, been great to hear that mostly things have been working for everyone and that's great. Um, I think I'm going to make a little bit of a change with In the Field episodes that deal with location shoots. I'm not going to bother with maps unless there's a reason to point out you know, here's something special that I found using the maps that directly applied to the shoot. And for in post, uh, very clear live edits are still very popular, so I will keep doing those. And, uh, you know, so look for another one coming pretty soon here. Uh, one other thing that um, was pointed out was that my audio tends to be kind of low. And so, well, uh, you can see I've got a new microphone here. I put my money where my mouth is. Let me see what I did there. Microphone, money, mouth. Of course you did. So hopefully the audio part of this will be better. I'm also you know, seeing if I can boost up the audio when I render the videos as well. So let me know if the audio has gotten better. Uh, it should have started to get better a couple of weeks ago. And now that I've got the new kit, that should be even better than it was last time. So with that, let's get to today's questions. First question is from Marty in Australia. And he asked, what application do you use to predict the tides? Uh, well, the, the short version is there's tons of them. Uh, if you just go to Google, and type in you know, your, your location tide chart, and you'll get you know, a plethora of websites, and I'm sure there'll be links to apps as well that you can use to get a feel for, you know, what's the tide going to be? Most of them will say something about a disclaimer that is not for you know, uh, official use, you know, don't use it if you're navigating or sailing or so forth. I guess there are more precise measurements or additional details that sailors need. Um, but for you know for the photographers, you know the, any of those will be fine. I use an app called Tide Chart, and it's very basic. You know, and I, it's on my iPhone. It's it's nice because it's in my pocket all the time. You can pick you know a location. So I tap location. You can have you know it's mainly U.S. based, but there are some international locations as well. And from there, you get a map. This is you know San Diego today. I'm recording this. It's the July third. So we see that low tide. At lowest is at 3:23, and then again at 2:48 in the afternoon. High tide 9:44, 9:03, and you get the white text here as well. Overlays the sunrise and sunset times, so that's kind of a nice little feature. As well as you get the moon phase, and you can you know tap in the uh, tap on the calendar and pick any other date and get a feel for you know when's the tide's looking good. So uh, I use it in two ways. One is either I know a particular day that I'm going to be going down to the shore what's the tides going to be looking like and then i can choose my location based on what the tides doing for me the other way is i'll just maybe start scanning and looking into the future looking for points where the sunrise or sunset coincide with a high tide or a low tide cuz those usually become a little more you know special occasions and that's one of the things i talk about in uh, my 10 tips for seascape photo book so uh, you got one of the tips for free by staying tuned to this q and a episode so lucky you <laughs> so anyway that's the app that i use tide chart Jim asked a question about leveling tripods, and it can be a chore. Is there any trick to doing it? Uh, well, I guess there's two, there's two parts to this answer. Uh, there, there is no trick, uh, but if you're just shooting a single scene, uh, I use the level built into the camera. I don't bother trying to get the bubble on my tripod base level. I'll just level the camera, take my shot, and the tripod can be all you know wonky and crooked, and that's fine because the camera's going to be straight. But if you're doing a pano, that's where you want to get the tripod base very level. And I talked about this uh, a few episodes ago, because when you sweep across a scene, if your tripod's uh, not level, you're going to get more variation in each one of those individual shots and end up throwing away more of the pano at the end. So I think that's, you know, Jim's what he's getting at in that second, uh, is the second part of this. Uh, so, you know, leveling the tripod. Well, if you are just trying to, um, you know, um, tighten the legs and adjust them and so forth. There really is no trick. It's a fair amount of uh, trial and error and just you know tinkering and adjusting. Uh, the, the, if you're doing a lot of panos, I guess what I would recommend is getting a leveling base for your tripod. Now I use Really Right Stuff and they have you know, a leveling base for the tripod. I don't own this base because I don't do that many panos. It, it's kind of on the, 
the lower part of my you know my wish list for gear. Uh, but what this device will do is imagine that you have your your ball head sitting on top of the base of your tripod, but then this like handle that's underneath, you can rotate that and then move the entire ball head, not not the ball, but like the entire head can move around, and then you can get that part level. Then you can do your your pano sweep. And so it's much quicker to be able to just like half turn that, rotate it around with your hand, much more precise than adjusting legs and so forth. So if you're doing a lot of panos, take a look to see if your tripod manufacturer has a leveling base, and that might be the answer you're looking for. So the tip of the week is leveling matters. Uh, if you're shooting a panoramic, you want to level your camera as well as leveling the base of your tripod. If you're not shooting panos, just level your camera, either uh, the built-in uh, level in your camera. If your camera doesn't have one, you might have a little bubble level that snaps in the hot shoe. That's fine for leveling your camera. Panos, you got to do both. You got to get the camera level and then you got to get the base of that tripod level so you don't have to throw away a lot of your uh, scene from your panoramic image. And that does it for this week in the field. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you've got questions, please send them my way. Love to hear from you. You can contact me directly through the website, comments on the video. And of course, the social shares are always great too. Pluses like ones. Uh, it's, it's nice to know that you're getting some type of value out of the video. And uh, that helps me keep coming back week after week to do more. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.